Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is how to change the transmission fluid and transmission pan slash filter. The filter is made in this pan on a 6HP19. So this is going to be your E90 stuff uh, post 2000 and well, it all depends on what it is. 2007. This particular one is a 2008 528XI. So it's all wheel drive with a 6HP19. Now there's a few differences on this one. We're going to have to remove the front drive shaft and a few other things. I know that sounds crazy, but just before we get started here, we're going to need some of us already under the car here. We have our e torque set. We can put on a little impact. We're going to need that to take the drive shaft off. I'll show you that here in a second. We're going to have to have our Allen bit tool set just like we have and our Torx. <clears throat> Here's a brand new pan. And this one has a drain plug right here. I think it's like a 10 mil Allen. We're going to drain it first. Well, actually, we're not going to drain it first. We're going to drain that second. And you can see the filter is actually made into this pan. These pans, I'll put a link in the description. They're about 40, 50 bucks for one of these. Uh, today, we're not going to use a Pentacin. I hate that stuff because you can't tell the state of it. Uh, today, we will be using, well, we won't fill it back up today, but I'll show you how, the uh, Valvoline Max Life Full Synthetic Multi Vehicle. And you can actually buy that at Walmart. It's like $17 for a gallon of it. Use that many times, a spider crawling on me, many times through the years on many, a whole myriad of different stuff. I've never had an issue. I really like this stuff, especially on a higher mileage car. This stuff is a little bit thicker. The consistency is a little bit thicker. It's like a 5W30 versus 10W40. And on the cars that have a lot of wear on the valve body, this seems to help out a lot. And we've had cars that we use the ZF or the Pentacin or whatever fluid you want. And it's real thin and they wouldn't shift right with it in higher mileage situations. With this stuff, it seemed like this does better with the seals. This does better with everything on it. And we never had an issue. So this whole oil change, transmission fluid change today uh, with the filter pan, with the fluid, I think we're about uh, 80, 90 bucks for the whole thing. Uh, the fluid is $17 for a gallon. We're going to have to have two gallons and not a whole two gallons. But we need two gallons to complete it. I think it was a little over eight quarts or about eight quarts. And then, um, like I said, about 40, 50 bucks. I'll put a link in the description for that. Let's go and get under the car and see what we got. Okay, so to start off with those all wheel drive cars, we're going to take the prop shaft off the front. Now, it's also a good time to check your U joint. If your car has a bunch of miles on it, that's probably toasted. We're going to take it off the back at the transfer case. I'm going to show you why here in a few minutes. Not at the front. Do not take it off the front. Do not take it off the front. <laughs> I'll say it again. Do not take it off the front. I'm going to show you why. So let me see here. We're going to need... Need that. That is a E12. These are a little universal here. Bang that right off. There we go. Perfect time to check this. And we replace this one. This one is still good shape. If this is hard to turn or seize up, please replace that. All right, so next up, we're going to use a 3 8 ratchet. We're going to get our Allen key. Before we do anything else, we're going to pull this fill plug out. I can find the right one. Because the last thing you ever want to do is drain everything out and not be able to get this out later down the road. All right, it's a little bit crusty. We'll give her a little tappity tappity. We're just gonna break it loose. Jesus Christ. Okay, see, now that's why you wanna take that out first. Because if you drain the fluid, seized in okay well, let me get a pipe or something we're gonna get this out of here 
Okay, so mission accomplished. We just took our cheater pipe here. I know we shouldn't be putting on that nice ratchet, but we did, and it broke it loose. And now we have that loose. All right, we don't want to take it out, just break it loose. A lot of guys don't do that. And actually, he's watching videos right before I did this, and I seen the guy on FPC Euro not do that. That could really screw you in the very end. And he, no, I'm sure he knows how to do it. He just didn't show it on the video. So nothing against him. It's just that was the situation. Just kind of checking the front dry shaft. That's all good. Now, before we go any further, let's put our bolts in a safe place with the dry shaft. We're going to pull this over here like so. We're going to get our ratchet. We need a bigger one for that. And we're just going to break this loose also to drain the fluid out. And we need to hold this pan up. Take that out of your drain plug. There's that. The fluid, it's looking a little weird. It stinks. It's not terrible. It still has a red tinge to it, so it's not totally shot. In fact, that's not Pentacin or ZF fluid that's in it. I can tell you that right now. So somebody's already done this once. Oh. Probably not to get on the camera. There we go. All right, we're just gonna let it drain for a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we might have to take off that exhaust bracket. I don't know, let's see. We're just gonna bang these all out. Okay, set that off to the side. We're just gonna let that thing drip out and you can see here, yeah, let me take these off, even touch that damn camera. Disgusting. Nothing worse than a transmission job, for sure. Okay, so you can see here, here's the mechatronics unit, mechatronics unit, the whole thing, the valve body, for se. Up here is the solenoids. And then back up here, you can see is the ECU, the black part on the very back of that. So what we're gonna have to do, I need to look up and see which bolts take out. If it's like all the other ZFs, they have bigger bolts that take out the actual unit, smaller is to take the the valve body apart but we got a triple and quadruple check all that for this very minute we're gonna leave it here for a little bit let it kind of drip dry it's dripping in our our drain pan here for the most part so we'll be right back okay so here's the whole unit out i didn't film it because it wasn't without having to look to be honest with you it's very difficult to film this but the situation is i'll put a diagram up here i looked up the diagram i thought all the bolts were just the bigger bolts that you take out and just to make sure i looked it up and it was. Uh, the only thing I missed was three, these three back here in the rear, and that faces towards the tail shaft, the transmission. But immediately, as soon as I took all the rest of them out, I was holding up, and I seen them hanging, so immediately I took them out. It was no problem at all. 
So what we're going to have to do here, and really if you're changing the transmission fluid and pan filter anyway, this is not difficult to get out. Uh, you just unplug this plug. It's like a half turn plug. You have to use a pair of needle nose to get to it. It's pretty tight space. Um, once you do that, you can just kind of push back on that a little bit and push it out of there. And then this part actually has like a little sleeve that seals that in there, right? Uh, but all the other sleeves except for the one stayed up in the transmission. The little square one came down with this one that goes right here. Um, it's really not that hard of a unit to deal with. So what we're going to have to do here, we got one, two, I don't know, three, four, five, six, probably six or seven bolts that go up through this way. And we get to the heads right here. It's these Torx, uh, Torx heads. I'm going to try to flip it over carefully. Yeah, so you can see the bolts here, and there's one that holds it in. You just look around and go, and we're going to separate this unit off of this. Now, I want to add to you, before you can hook this, you can see it has a mechanism here. you got to pinch that little button and pull down, and then it hooks that, but unscrew it from the outside first. That releases that. It's really a simple setup. It's not that bad at all. So uh, I'm more worried about shipping this unit out to get cloned because it is a very sensitive unit. And the post office is pretty rough on stuff. Well, let's call it like it is. Um, so I don't know. But I'm thinking once we unbolt this, this is just going to slide off of the solenoids. And this thing can stay here on the bench. I'll put a towel or a piece of cardboard or something over it to keep all the dirt off of it. And it could just stay here. You know, it's nice thing about having the shop, uh, nothing else has to get in here. So all the bolts under the car on the mat, that could all stay there. Everything could stay just the way it is, all jacked up. And that's what you're going to have to have if you're sending this unit out. You don't want to move everything around, yada, yada, yada. All the bolts that hold this in, so there's three here. There is two along down here, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. And uh, you need to support it with something. I've been down this road a few times before, so I made sure and let the bolt here that was still, you know, just barely loose and a bolt over here. So when I took all the rest of them out, it had two bolts holding it. And then push your hand against it or whatever you want to do, if you trust that. I'm pretty big, dude. I'm pretty strong. I hold it up there pretty easy. Took my other hand and zipped them out with the impact. And like I said, we didn't really have much problem. Oh, and these three there, like I said before. So I'm just going to separate this real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so here it is. It was pretty easy to separate. Um, basically, you have the little little slider here that actually hooks up down here to the the control valve, whatever. That's not the right name for it, but you know what I'm talking about. When you move the gear shifter, it moves that. And I mean, it's really not that difficult of a situation. Okay, I watch that. That has to go back in the right spot. So I'm just looking here. Okay, see so it has like a little slot, little hole that goes back into. So a little um, careful watching, put it back together. So the biggest thing at, at this point in time, like this piece here is weak, right? So this thing's got to get shipped. Man. I think what we're going to do here. We'll have to send the ECU separately. We'll have to ship this in a big giant box with a bunch of bubble wrap in it all by itself. And we'll have to make sure and tell him to handle it with with care. We'll have to wipe all this stuff off of it, keep anything getting in that plug, and that's it. Now we're not taking the solenoids out, so there shouldn't have be an issue. These solenoids, sometimes they sit out too long. If you take them out, let them sit on your bench, and they get dry, they won't work again. So hopefully that's not going to be the situation. Uh, you could have it to this point, I would say, in, in about 30 minutes. It's really not that big a deal to get out. Like I said, the only reason why we're doing this, this has to be bench flashed. Um, so that's it. Now, if you don't see part two to this, whenever we, we refill the fluid, we're going to put all this back in. We're going to put the pan back on. Uh, I'm going to fill the fluid with the car off. All right, we're not going to start it at first. You know, that's 
let me back up just a little bit. The only way this whole thing is gonna go wrong with changing the fluid is if you don't follow the fill procedure correctly. You start with the car off, you fill it up from the fill plug until it starts coming out the side of the trans side of the fill plug. Once you get that far, usually uh, you, you go in and you start the car up with it on jack stands. We'll leave it just like it is, all jacked up, all four all four wheels, and let it idle. We'll keep filling it up. All right. Um, at that point in time, we could go through the gears, fill it up, starts until it starts coming out. Then we put the fill plug back in. All right. Then we go through all the gears. This is where it comes in, where I took the dry shaft off of the transfer case side and not off the front diff. Now we can run through all the gears and the dry shaft's not gonna be flopping around. Uh, that's why you take it off that side. Uh, if you don't think you could follow those directions, take the dry shaft completely out. That's your best option. So we're gonna run through the gears after we refill it when it's running. Let me recap one more time. Fill it when the car's off, engine's off, until it comes out the fill plug. Go start the car up. Go back underneath of it, keep filling up till it starts trickling out the, the fill plug. All right. When after you do that, get in. Go through, let it go through all the gears. Go to reverse, you know, park, reverse, back to park, go to drive, let it put it in drive, hit the gas a little bit, let it go through a couple gears. You know, let it do that, let it work everything in. Go back underneath of it. It'll take a little more fluid. Put a little more fluid in it. Once that's full that time, you can replace the plug while it's still running. Don't go turn the car off without having the fill plug in it. Everything will just dump out of the floor. While the car is running, put the fill plug back in it. That's how you do this. A lot of guys are like, oh, it has to be a, at 50 degrees Celsius and all this other stuff. No, that's how you do it. The transmission is not going to care if you have a quarter of a quart more or less in it. It's not going to give an absolute rat's ass about that at all. But when it does get scary, it gets below a quart low. That's when your danger starts. Two quarts low is probably self-destruction. Probably kick out of all the forward gears, only reverse works, and that kind of stuff. So if you have a transmission leak, don't let it leak. Make sure you stay on top of things and get it fixed. Running these low on fluid, we'll run them. Run the whole transmission. Running the original fluid in it, like BMW tells you, will ruin the transmission. Just that simple. That's it, guys. Sorry for kind of a weird video, but uh, that's the EGS removal. I'll do the video when I put it back in of the actual fill procedure. Me telling you now is just for you guys that don't want to wait till then. You need to know right now. That's how you refill it. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.